Hello, and welcome to the show. The legend, legend the, the myth, myth the, the man, man, Big Daddy Bam Bam, a.k.a. Chicken, Chicken Wing. Wing. Yeah, so today we're going to be talking about motorcycle camping. The summer is winding down. Oh, I got to stretch a little bit. Yeah. Uh, I overdo it some days and I feel good, so I get a little sore. It's kind of amazing. Look at the tan line. You can tell where I wear my watch. Anyway, uh, as the summer's winding down, we're getting ready to go into the roots and rhythm and, you know, the lake's starting to wind down, so the traffic's a little bit less than what it normally would be. Uh, I wanted to go over motorcycle camping. Uh, a lot of people camp. No big deal. And my sons had recently uh, really got into motorcycles, so they're kind of how you say, uh, here was here wanting to camp out and do the motorcycle thing and everything. So, pretty much, like I said, skills, tools, and pipes. Well, first skill you're going to need, very first skill you're going to need, motorcycle. You know how to ride that motorcycle. You know what I mean? Do you know exactly what I mean? So, that's going to be the first thing. You're going to need a motorcycle. You got to have a motorcycle if you're going to go motorcycle camping pretty good to go now once you get there you're gonna need a few other things you're gonna need some tools some tools to survive on something to cook on of course tools to work on your motorcycle just in case you're gonna need a plan uh i've got a static plan my static plan is i got a bed rope i've got a backpack and that's pretty much how i go you see my saddle bags and my tool bag on the front of the bike well, it ain't on this picture but i got a tool bag i keep the tools in on the front of the bike i got a saddle bag to keep things in that I need on the journey and then I got my backpack which I put on my sissy bar and my bedroll now let's start with the bedroll what my bedroll is is I a little old-fashioned with a little technology you know I'm a, I'm a mixed a mixed bag of fruit I guess you'd say uh, my bedroll I use a tarp I'd like to go with the old-school canvas tarp but I ain't found one I like so I use a tarp just a regular old tarp it's uh big enough and wide enough to where I can put it over my motorcycle I probably should have found a picture of that but I don't have a picture of it but anyway uh I can put it over my motorcycle of course I lean my motorcycle over and I can hook it to my bike throw it down and it's big enough to make a curve and have a floor uh, I hook it to the high side of my bike if I need to, if it's, you know, raining when I get there. I also carry uh, my photography pole, hiking pole, which it's a hiking pole, but on top of it, it's got a thing where I can attach my camera. With a little part that comes up, fits perfectly in the eye of the tarp. So if need be, I can stake it down and make a lean-to, make all kinds of different configurations. Well, inside that tarp and a bedroll, if you've ever seen a motorcycle, it's got a bedroll in the front. They're pretty small. Mine's pretty big. <laughs> uh, I've got a couple other things. I've got a pad. Of course, you don't want to sleep on the hard ground. And you got to insulate yourself from the ground so that you don't get hypothermia. I've got uh, a wool blanket. And I've got a sleeping bag. And I've got a, a nice little neat roll that's easy to access. And I can pull it off if I get where I'm going in the rain. I can pull it off, set up the tarp real quick, throw my stuff under it, get dry, kind of get all my stuff out of my bike. Uh, the saddle bag on the high side, and for y'all know how the high side is when you lean the motorcycle over, the side that's the highest. You always want to, you know, put your kickstand away from you. That way, if the bike falls over, it don't fall on you while you're sleeping. <laughs> At the same time, uh, the water, if it does hit the bike where the tarp's open, it'll run away from you and not down onto your undercarriage and get you soaking freaking wet. Uh, but anyway, so the saddle bag on the high side is where I keep stuff I'll need once I get there and get everything kind of set up in a quick hurry in case there's a rainstorm or something. Uh, the food I'm going to eat, um, you know, what I need to cook with. I normally would take a tuna can. And I learned this in the Boy Scouts, take a tuna can and you pack it with cardboard or paper and then you put grease over it or put whatever over it. Um, recently, instead of using a tuna can, I found the nacho cheese cans with the plastic top. 
you let it get cool, that plastic top fits on there, of course. You've seen the nacho cans you can buy in the store. Or nacho cheese. And I love nacho cheese anyway. And once I get done and it cools off, I just put the top on it. Wow. There's my cooking source. Because a lot of times, depending on when you're camping at night, I have to do this year round. I don't so much when well, I've been sick here lately, but when I used to ride all the time and I had my, my bobbers and stuff, that's what I would always use. Because that way if there ain't an open fire, you can just use that. Set your pot right on top of it. And there's there's a couple different ways to do it. Uh, in the Boy Scouts, they use, we would put that, it's like a, a sterno burner. But you'd use a coffee can upside down. And they have a hobo can. I need to really, like, you know, do some, do some stuff on this. So I'm, I'm probably going to get back to y'all on this. This will be part one. Just me talking about it. Uh, but I keep all that in the high side. And then on the low side, I keep things that I may, may or may not need, you know, um, extra clothes because I always carry long sleeve shirts and stuff because if you take off during the day you'll be sweating and when the sun goes down you're going to get colder so you're going to have to stop put layers on and you always wear layers um, you know that way you're kind of you've got everything you need there extra gloves my chaps all that normally my chaps I'll normally keep on my handlebars or on the sissy bar depending on which where I put the bed roll and of course I constantly update stuff. You got to when you get down, you know. Uh, I don't necessarily go to Cabela's and buy a bunch of stuff. Uh, I did get my sleeping bag from there. I've had it forever. Uh, a lot of stuff, I'm a recycle reuser. Uh, anybody that's been in my house knows I don't like to throw away anything. Uh, any extra food we got goes on the compost pile. Uh, any extra cardboard, whether it's, you know, uh, cardboard off the cracker thing gets shredded up and used in the worm farm. Uh, I'm not like a tree hugger, but at the same time, waste not, won't not. Um, a lot of the things I use when I go camping is just recycled stuff. Um, I can't even tell y'all the recycled stuff that I've got. Uh, you know, but you gotta have your tools, you gotta have your stuff you want, you know. Now, I watch a lot of the prison shows, especially the prison cooking shows. There's things that you can do, and I've done a video on this. A lot of the prison food is directly similar to camp food. If, you know, I watch a lot of the people on the AT Trail. I've walked most of the AT Trail. I'm not a through hiker or nothing like that. Just over through the years, I've been almost every part of it, other than the northern part up in the very top of Maine um, but a lot of it's similar so I'll take a uh, Ziploc bags full of oatmeal and rice and peanut butter for protein um, tuna you can always reuse the tuna cans and I don't buy the packs I actually get the tuna cans it's a little bit heavier but I'm not you know I'm not using the backpack to say as my main source of you know carry so tuna cans is not a problem throwing the side bag and go. Um, peanut butter you can put in Ziploc bags. Uh, blueberry mix, muffin mix, uh, or pancake mix. You can use it for different things. You can use it to flavor the oatmeal. Uh, Raymond noodles are easy, you know, easy to fix. Hot water is all you need. Uh, of course, you're gonna need, you know, I carry a little bitty. I don't know if you're caught a cup or a bowl, but I don't think you should have to carry a plate and everything with you. You can eat straight out of the bowl. If there's two of you, you eat your half, let them eat their half. Of course, my half's always in the bottom. Uh, pretty much that's it. And then you can just ride, you know, uh, urban camping. When I went to Nassau for my last treatment, it took me about 18 hours to come back, and I just kind of took my time because I was, you know, Anybody that's been through radiation knows it takes a toll on you. Uh, so I'd ride for a little while, find me somewhere to ditch out, throw down my bed roll and take a nap for a little while. And it took me about 18 hours to make it back from Knoxville, a two hour trip. But I met a couple of people that I'll probably stay in contact with and that's just part of camping. You know, just like any other thing, like when you're on the Appalachian Trail, you meet people. 
you have a trail family. You meet people that, yeah, you might be on there by yourself, but you might get to this town and you've seen them along the way and they're on the same journey as you. So you kind of share that and you kind of lean on each other. You know, uh, us as humans have to have social contact. It's one of those things. Um, speaking of social contact, so there's a lot of things that I have decided to do when I'm on there. Um, And yeah, I smoked cigarettes for years, smoked cigars. I didn't really get the whole pipe thing. When you smoke a cigarette, you smoke a cigarette, throw it down, you go back to the day. Uh, when you smoke a pipe, you kind of sit back, calm down a little bit, take your time, and enjoy it more. Uh, I guess the biggest thing, you know, you got when you get ready to leave, you got to pack up everything, and you gotta go. Well, I learned a long time ago on the trails and humping and humping's backpacking, it's just military work for it, that uh, you gotta enjoy things. You gotta stop and smell the roses sometimes, I guess you'd say. Um, my son wanted me to smoke a pipe, so he bought me a pipe. He goes, Here, Dad, try the pipe. And he's got into it and, you know, got into cigars and some of the finer things that, you know, your kids do kind of mimic you sometimes so anyway uh something about waking up in the morning you know you make you a cup of coffee and a lot of times it's instant coffee you can, some people carry coffee pots it's just easier to carry instant coffee sometimes uh, but you know you gotta pack everything up you gotta get ready to go so instead of being in a rush you know and you're it's not like you've got to be at a certain time something to be said about just taking a breather making you some coffee while the water's cooking, you know, start rolling up your bed roll, sit down and enjoy it, maybe roll half your bed roll, you know, do what you need to do, sit back, watch the sunrise, feel the warmth of the morning, drink you a little bit of hot coffee, smoke you a pipe, and just enjoy yourself. I mean, you're going to be on the motorcycle all day, ripping and running, worrying about this, trying to get where you're going, so why not start the day off calm and gentle? What's better than a cup of coffee and some good tobacco that has actual flavor and you just sit and relax and enjoy it. And then of course, once you do, your day, you're calm, you're clear-headed, and you're ready to go to your next adventure. So, and it kind of gives you a chance to get your head clear and go, okay, I need to pack this and pack that. Because you know, if you're in a hurry, a lot of times you get stuff where you don't pack stuff right. And the next thing you know, something's blowing off the thing. You can kind of sit back and enjoy the sunset, take some pictures, you know, listen to the birds sing, eat you some oatmeal, you know, it starts the day off just right. And then once you get the day started off right, it's just more enjoyable. The bike ride more enjoyable. Uh, the way that I've got everything set up with the bed roll and stuff, if the bike hasn't break down, I need to work on it. I can set the tarp over top of the bike, throw up my little thing. And my pole is pretty good. It will go up to uh, seven and a half foot. So that's plenty enough room to, if I need to, build an A frame, put the bike on it so I can work on it if it's raining. Uh, a lot of just prep, like the Boy Scouts used to say, prep. I do carry a, a med bag just in case I'm out somewhere by myself if something happens. Uh, I know how to suture, so I carry sutures, you know, hemostats everything like that that I may need bandages in case somebody I run across needs bandages up or needs first aid. Uh, I don't like suturing anybody else other than myself just because there is always that chance of a, you know, sewing in infection or something, especially if you're in the woods and don't have a lot. Uh, I do carry iodine with me, carry alcohol pads, stuff like that, uh, you know, just for my sake. Um, if it, I guess if it did come down to it, we was in the woods and something did happen and I had to suture somebody, I, I would. I prefer not to. You know, I prefer to get them actual first aid, but, you know, send them to a triage or an emergency room, something like that. Um, as far as communication goes, I've got an app called it Eat Sleep Ride and I pay for the upgrade version where it picks up the GPS if I do wreck, so it sends out a signal. Um, I don't carry a cell phone. I do carry a cell phone, but it's not active. Uh, it could be, but any old cell phone you can call 911 from and be like, hey, this is such such, I'm at mile marker or whatever. Uh, you know, 
we had a bike wreck. Uh, the East Sleep Rider, I'll make us send out. Yeah. We'll send out stuff. And I just got a thing. My parts are coming from Harley. Uh, I blew a push rod in a tappet. And luckily, my buddy Sean, Sean Reed, y'all ever get to try to see his flea market? He's got a little booth set up in there. All kind of Harley parts. He loves old, old Harleys. He's got tons of parts he sells, you know, down there. Um, he, I called him. He said, yeah, I've got a couple iron heads out here. Come out here and, you know, you might have to machine the parts, but here they are. And he was cool about it. Went in. He had just iron head cases sitting there. We took them apart. Got what I needed. Rebuild the bike. Uh, got it all rebuilt. Purring like a kid. Purring like a freaking kid. Then I go to get on up to go to Chopper Fest with Sean and a couple other guys and the clutch cable broke. Well on the old school bikes a lot of times you can't get parts. You just can't walk into a Harley store like you do on the new bikes to go I need this part of that and they can have it in inventory or order it for you next day. You gotta go hunting parts. So a lot of times eBay and Amazon are your friend. Uh, I had to order the part and it won't be here till well, they said cheesy, but I just got a thing that said it'll be here in the morning. So, I will be working on the bike, getting ready for my next adventure. Uh, with Rhythm Roots coming to town, I don't like being around a lot of people. Uh, I'm probably going to head over the mountain and go camping. Maybe get a couple of kids to go with me. Throw some stuff on the bike and go from there. So, uh, I will do a video of the actual equipment that I use. Like I said, I'm constantly upgrading stuff. But as far as you know, me motorcycle and being a geek, yeah. Um, I have a stator on my bike, so I have a 12 volt cigarette plug in that I run off of it. That way, I can charge my phone to take the videos y'all seen. Uh, my GPS, which I hardly ever turn on. Uh, I do got GPS, Waze, and all that on the cell phone, but I like my actual TomTom. -tom. I've got an old school, old, old, old school. Tom Tom, they don't make them no more. It's a, a Tom Tom Ease. I bought it off one of my buddies years ago. Uh, there's a couple of roads that it don't show, but it does have the, the points of interest and all that on it. And if I need it, I can just throw it on my my RAM, take my phone off, throw it on my RAM. And it's there if I do need it. I can always use my phone with the Waze app, of course. Uh, sometimes the Waze gets weird though where it needs service or need Wi-Fi so sometimes the GPS is just better and like I said I've got the coordinates where I used to do the geocache uh, I've got the coordinates app on that one where it'll actually put the topological maps so I can kind of see the hills and whatever else and find a good spot to camp out in um, as far as other technology uh, sometimes I'll take my tablet one of my tablets uh, I'll take one of my tablets with this, you know, just in case I want to read a book or something. Uh, I've got a solar charger that I'll take every once in a while. Um, it's just a little solar panel. It actually, I had it, got it with the floodlight, but the floodlight quit working. I just kept the panel and kind of rewired it for what I needed for. Uh, of course, change of clothes, change the socks. You always got to change the socks. Uh, hand sanitizer that's a big thing hand sanitizer even for the first aids awesome um, keep Vaseline I always keep a little small jar of Vaseline I normally have one in my first aid bag of course I'll keep another one uh, fire starter uh, if you get a cut or something you want to quit bleeding you know I learned that from back in my fighting days and boxing days um, you know throw some hand sanitizer on it put some Vaseline over top of it wrap it with an ace bandage or something there you go. Quick first aid band -aid. Um, You can use the cotton and the gauze. For most gauze, if they ain't the syllable kind, they're made from cotton or a cotton blend. Put some Vaseline on them, or your fire starter. Um, I mean, pretty much the biggest space that's taken up in all my stuff is probably the bed roll and my clothes. Um, I guess between, you know, hiking as much as I have through the years I just kind of minimize sometimes less is more um, of course you want to pack the bike where all the weights as low as you can get it so my saddlebags carry most of the heavier stuff um, which 
if I, it's just me on the bike and I ain't taking nobody with me, I'll put my backpack on the passenger seat instead of putting it on the back side of the sissy bar. That way I kind of got a couch to lean back on. And, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, I've learned a lot of stuff from motorcycle camps and we go on the polar bear runs and I've had bobbers. In case y'all don't know what a bobber is, it's pretty much you cut everything off of it. You don't need fenders, everything. And it takes a little bit to get used to having no front fender and the water coming up, but <laughs> you learn. I can ride in the rain with no fender. Uh, the way my bobber's set up, I just duck down to the side and, you know, get down low and let the water go to the top of me and get gone. Um, I guess probably the biggest thing that the old man, we call him the old man, I don't even know his name, 82 years old, rides a hardtail, he has since the 60s. He's an awesome guy. Everybody just calls him the old man. He he's lived on his bike since the sixties. And minimal. Minimal. You know, you don't need the big fancy three hundred dollar uh fire stove. Um uh, or rocket uh rocket stove. You can build one out of a coffee can if that's what you want. You can make them where they come apart and fold down. Uh most of the time you don't need a big fire. I mean unless you're just camping with a bunch of people and you want a fire with, you know lights this and that as far as lights go I carry a, a big mag light a really big mag light it uh, holds eight double D batteries so you can imagine how big it is um, I don't hardly ever have to use it uh, if I do want light I'll just take it off and aim it up towards the tent um, as far as you know, safety goes, I normally hide out uh, stealth camping, urban camping, so yeah, uh, that's pretty much it, I'm going to do some videos on some of the equipment and some of the little hacks I know, but for now I just want to kind of give y'all a heads up uh, where I'm heading with the motorcycle angle of this channel and all that good stuff, so uh, if you got any questions, comments, leave them below, I'd love to talk to y'all. Uh, maybe even do a, a camp trip with y'all. So, until next time, peace. Like and subscribe to so you can stay free, y'all. And don't forget, hit that bell so you can tell when we are.